don't show prep. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. I, just, I, I just barely yourself. make it in. <laughs> you know, I'm sure you can tell. But we don't show. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's, let's put the cards down on the table here. Bobby Hurricanes, yeah, you know the name already, it's Mercy, ha <laughs> ha, it's a six red cane show, can't forget the name though, got jazz, blue vision, DJ break the game code, ain't no changing up, ain't no breaking up, real port alive from the hall ride stadium, ball 14 for the orange and green, you see the six rig champs, it's more than a dream, this is life on the field, beyond a hundred yards of hurricane that's never still put a damage to the squad, the six rig cane show, the six rig cane show, the six rings cane show, <laughs> you know. What's wrong with us? Seriously. What's wrong with us? We're Miami Hurricanes fans. Welcome to the Six Rings Cane Show, a show dedicated to Miami Hurricane sports, featuring the legendary Larry Bluestein, Jazz Santana, Vish, and Danny Gillette. Let's go, Canes. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the Six Rings Cane Show. Back at our, our normal time here, Mondays, eight thirty. Blue DJ, how's it going? Doing good, doing good. Can't complain. Yep. So, so it looks like we we finally have a filled in coaching staff now. So that was kind of the big news from the last week. Is uh, Shavis <laughs> Jackson named the defensive backs coach? Um, so I guess I'll, I'll start with you on that, Blue Jay. What are your thoughts on, on that that hire? Well, in retrospect, it's a good hire. And just, you know, like I said last week, I said there won't be a person that's going to get the get it right. And, like, I was – no one even mentioned him. I don't think they even knew he existed before he was hired. Uh, he's had a lot of experience. Um, I remember him uh, back in the day. He, he played at South Alabama. Pretty good player. And – uh but you know what? He was at a, LSU, actually. Right? Oh, LSU. He was at South yeah. Alabama coaching, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he coached. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. He was at South yeah. Alabama coaching. Um, I, I think that's uh, it's a plus. Um, I just think that when you he, when you hire somebody like him, it, you're getting him because of a reason, and whether it be uh, Gidry who knew of him or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I, I assume that's the main, the main reason is the yeah. familiarity with, with Gidry. Um, and I'll let you know next year. <laughs> is that all, that, that's always the case, right? Um, yeah. but, but yeah, no, I think it's that familiarity and, and to the level of, they can maintain some continuity. I think that was probably the best way to do it. DJ, I don't know if you have any thoughts. Yeah, I uh, I actually remember when Jackson played uh, one season for the Patriots. I thought the name sounded familiar, and then I looked over the weekend, and I definitely remember the name. Uh, you know, I think it's I think it's a good um, hire, like like you know Blue and you said. You know, the familiarity with uh, Coach Gidry certainly is a plus. I mean, you always like to have you know coaches who are on the same page, as we found out the hard way a couple of years ago. Um, but um, you know, I think. Like like Blue alluded to, we'll see what happens uh, on the field this coming season. You know, he was kind of an off the radar pick. I mean, he was the MAC recruiter of the year back in 2017, so he can recruit a little bit. And um, you know, I'm not too high, or too low about this. So I just really want to wait and see what he can bring to the table. I definitely think he's a competent coach. So, I mean, that's that's always a plus, right? But. You know, not too high, not too low about this hire, but, you know, I do think that he is uh, more than ready to take on the role. Yeah, I do think given the chemistry issues um, that DJ alluded to from a couple of years ago, it is it is a safe hire in that sense. He's not going to, you know, undermine Gidry because yeah. we certainly had issues with that. Um, as I bring in, uh, 
our fourth co-host here, Jazz. Jazz, thoughts on uh, on Shevis Jackson? That's kind of we just kicked the show off at that, and we're going around the horn here. So, <clears throat> yeah, Shevis uh, Jackson, Shevis Regal, whatever you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Crown Royal. That's what Ed Reeves Crown. says, about, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean that's that's who I kind of uh, spoke about last week, also. Uh, right, I, I felt like that was the guy that Miami was zeroed in on. Um, I think this is less of a less of an under the radar hire than a lot of people think. Like, this is a guy that a lot of schools um, knew about that were interested in uh, bringing him in. Um, I know at one point LSU was the school that wanted to bring him in. Obviously, he's a former LSU Tiger, so. Uh, but I think a lot of, uh, you know, for, for a little while there, LSU wanted to bring him in as opposed to bringing back Corey Raymond. So I know that was, <clears throat> that was something that was, and I saw it on, on some chats and some, some whatnot, some people talking about it. Um, apparently that's some of the, you know, a lot of the fans, a lot of the, um, you know, some of the former players at LSU wanted him uh, to come back and be the DB coach at LSU too. Now with this, with Blake Baker, I know, I know. Blake Baker as a defensive coordinator over at LSU now. So um, I think it's a great hire. Um, I know I heard DJ mention that he was the MAC uh, recruiting coordinator uh, or recruiting uh, coach of the year um, a, a few years back. Um, he does have a familiarity with, with Gedry's system. I think that they only crossed paths for one year, though, uh, in 2022. So I don't know. I don't know if it's – I mean, that's obviously playing a part in it, right? He knows the system. He understands it. Uh, and I think that, you know, he, he he knows how to coach it. But I think that, you know, he's not as under, he's not as uh, under the radar as a lot of people are, you know, saying. This is, this is a really, really good, good hire. At, um, you know, a, a coach that, that has, has done, you know, really, really well at, at his position. You know, he was um, – you know, he was over at Marshall, and he did some really good things there. I think they were ranked 17th overall, um, something along those lines. Um, I, I was just reading it, and I can't even remember the the, uh, uh, the numbers. However, he did a really good job over there, so I'm happy with the hire. I think it's a hell of a hire. Uh, I think that, um, you know, DB, like you mentioned, Vish, this is great for continuity as well, uh, obviously because of those Gidry ties. But um, this was more of a Gidry hire. Than a Mario hire, and I don't say that in a bad way. I don't say that Mario is not, you know, doesn't have his hands in this in this hire. However, he is doing something that he's not really that he hasn't done a lot. Blue, and, and you could probably attest to this more than anybody else. He usually wants the control of every single thing that he does, and I mean, this was an opportunity that he now he's you know potentially changing his ways a little bit, and and, and said. You know, I, I want Coach Gidry. I want you to, you know, make as much as this decision as I am as well. Let's do this together. Let's get the guy you want. And I think yeah. Coach Gidry wanted Chevis Jackson as a DB coach, and I think that's why he's here as well. So um, I like that. I think, uh, and on the other side, I think the Shannon Dawson, uh, Shannon Dawson had a lot to to say about Coach Merritt as well. Uh, but I mean, Coach Merritt is a hell of a running backs coach as well. So I think both guys come in at a great at a great time in their career. Um, and a great time for Miami as well to be able to, number one, recruit, and number two, develop players. And they've both been able to do that. So I'm really excited for this hire. I don't know if you guys – we talked about Merritt. I know we talked about him last week. But, you know, that's uh, that was made official as well. So I'm really happy about it. I'm happy about it. I, you know, I think that Chavez Jackson – look, I, I know we're spending a lot of time on these position coaches at the end of the day. You know, it's it's great and all, but um, you know, Gidry's Gidry's the one that's he, you you gotta let him just be able to coach the defense as a whole, and I think this gives him an opportunity where he trusts the guy that's back there coaching those guys um, to be able to concentrate a little bit more and install more of, install more of that defense that he wants. Um, at Miami, and I think I'm, you know, uh, I'm on board with that. I think it's a great hire. I think it's a great hire. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit more mixed than you are. Um, I think the only reason he was hired because he's Gidry's guy, which is fine. But I, I think the other stuff, there's no chance he's the Miami DB coach if Gidry's not the defensive coordinator. So we can then we can start with that and then look around to pump it up. 
but that's fine. But I'd braid higher. To well, me, that, who, that, who would you have the, taken? Who was the guy? That well, you I mean, well, I mean, you know, it's late in the game. They did the best they could. But what what do we consider a great hire now? Like, I mean, it's just Marshall's oh, defensive back coach. Was Gidry was the defensive coordinator? That's a hell of a hire. Is it? Yeah, absolutely. We're in year one. We what? We won. I mean, look, the jury is still out on Dawson and Gidry. Um, and I, and I think we can acknowledge that. And this is all, and it's out on Mario too, right? It's all a work in progress. I like the idea that this is going to allow Gidry to have someone he's comfortable with because the last thing you want to do coming in, you know, a few weeks before spring ball is to introduce some new person, some new dynamic right. in there. And, you know, when we're trying to build towards spring ball, but I mean, we don't know that that Gidry and Dawson are good hires yet. They've been here one year. They're both of their yep. units were very up and down. Um, I mean, Gidry's defense lost the Louisville game, right? I mean, it's not, it's not, it wasn't all like roses. Um, they also lost the North Carolina game. They played well enough to win several of our law, like North Carolina State. They basically didn't give anything up and we lost anyway because the offense couldn't score for shit. So it's been, it was very up and down though. I, I, we're hoping, you know, year two will bring more consistency, but we don't know if those hires worked yet. When we were seven and six last year. It wasn't <laughs> we're not there yet, and we won't really know yet. And then you know, Manny's staff as totality was a disaster. His off, like you said, Jess, his defensive coordinators, LSU's defensive coordinators, offensive coordinators, the head coach at SMU. He's the head coach at Duke. <laughs> and yet here they were trash. Like I, I don't as a collective unit. So this stuff is like. If they, I guess, yeah, I but guess... Manny got that job because of you know what he's he's done as a defensive coordinator. I think we can't say that he's not he hasn't been a good defensive coordinator. He's been a very good defensive coordinator. So I'm saying collectively, job, but... collectively, if you look at his staff, one is now the head coach at a P5 school. Right. One is the defensive coordinator at a major P5 program. He's a head coach somewhere else already. But when they all three got together here, it didn't work. And that's and I, I think I think what we need to realize is there is. If there was a right way or a correct way to do this, everyone would just do it. You know, something that works in one place doesn't work in another place. Something yeah. that works sometimes is so I, I'm totally fine with the hire. Um, I think again, I think it was mo the most important thing was we avoid issues we had two years ago where there was not a chain of command because everyone thought they were too good for the role they were in. Um, right. we certainly did that. We have someone that'll be comfortable with the language that Gidry uses to communicate his defense. Um He's a good recruiter. So there's a lot to like here. I, just, I, don't, I think great's probably a little strong, at least in my opinion. The jury's oh, still out, in my opinion, honestly. I mean, to say it's a hell of a hire, I think, you know, respectfully would be a little bit of an overstatement, but I'm not ready to kind of, you know, feed down on him yet. I'm not saying that, that any of you are. I'm just speaking from my own opinion. But, you know, I think at the same time, this late in the game, I think he was a good coach for what, what time of year it is with spring practice spring practice is approaching and you know kind of the beginning of spring ball happening i mean the jury is still out and you know i think he does have the potential to be really really good but you know we we also thought that the coaching staff 2 years ago was going to be out of this world and it fell apart so I mean, well, the, the coaching staff fell apart last year because number one, the, we thought we had the personnel to be able to bring in a coaching staff like that uh, to coach players here at the school, and that's definitely one one of the reasons why it fell apart. Yeah. Another reason is because they didn't want to. Apparently, they just didn't want to coach, and um, you know that was that was a mistake by by Mario. I think he corrected it by bringing in guys as as Fish mentioned, as you mentioned, DJ, guys that are going to come in and understand that there's a chain of command, mm -hmm. but also guys that can coach, right? So I think that. You know, the, a great hire isn't necessarily the most popular hire. A great hire isn't necessarily bringing in a Hall of Fame offensive coordinator or the cute, the, the prettiest <clears throat> name out there in, in college football either. I think that a, a great hire is understanding where you fit in and how you can contribute. And he potentially is that guy that can come in and do that. Now, same thing with Gidry. I think, you know, not understanding that, you know, Gidry could have very well have been the, the defensive coordinator at LSU this year. 
Um, he was uh, he was in the running. He definitely was an option for LSU. Um, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know exactly why he didn't get the job and Blake Baker got it instead. But the, the, the point is that he was a guy that was looked at as a top two or top three candidate at LSU to get the job. So that, to me, tells me, if, if, you know, we, we – the thing with a lot of people is that we, we don't want to acknowledge how good some coaches are. I'm not saying you're not Vish. I'm just saying fans in general. They don't want to acknowledge how good coaches are until all of a sudden the SEC comes calling. And then all of a sudden now they're really good coaches. Oh, my God, now he's a really good coach. So Chavez Jackson was in the running to be the LSU defensive back coach. But I think that we're – if we want to say that he's not great, that that's an overstatement. I think it's also an understatement to say that he was – just a nobody that would just pick them up because it was last, you know, last minute thing, and he makes sense because he meshes well with Gidry. I think that that's not the only reason why Miami chose him. I think it's a really good hire based off of his track record, based off of what he's been able to do and develop players at a place like Marshall, um, and and how he's been able to recruit that position and how he can coach it. Um, and so I think that all of those combined with the fact that he does have experienced coaching with Coach Gidry, I think is, is 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 a plus, but that doesn't necessarily always work at other places either. So, you know, sometimes you bring your assistant coaches, sometimes you bring your people and it doesn't work. And I think this is an opportunity where we can see that Mario is also, as you as as we've mentioned, kind of loosening up on the whole I have to have control of everything. It's my say who is the coach here. I think the fact that he is giving his assistant coaches, his office coordinator, his defensive coordinator, the, the, the you know the opportunity to pick some of their guys out uh, to to be here, I think is a great thing. I think that's a, that's that's him, sh- you know, showing I guess growth. I guess is the biggest thing. I think now the only thing he needs to do is hire someone that can control the clock, uh, but. That's never going to happen, apparently. So we'll, too we'll soon. That. Way yeah. too soon. That might be a little too too much, but um, I mean, there are guys who do that, so it's not even. Oh like no! A joke yeah, I, I know it's a joke, but it's but there are <laughs> guys that do it, right? I mean, it, it yeah. literally. I mean, we all we're all, well, obviously like everyone's going to always remember the kneel down, but yeah. I mean, they're making fun of it already. It, with yeah, the, but with but the it happened in the bowl league. game too. Like, I mean, yeah. we, yeah. we the shit out of clock, left the game with two timeouts. And quite honestly, I think every you know program okay. should have one because the adrenaline's running so high. You got to make split second decisions. I mean, sometimes the clock does escape you, and that's why you have a guy that helps Which you out. Is why? Do you think he gets those now in the beginning of the season? Does he get know. those? Do they carry know. over? <laughs> this is why I always say, look, if you can't manage the clock and you're losing in a game, this rhymes when in doubt, call timeout. Yep. Because you can always manage the remaining time on the clock. Once it's gone, it's gone. You know, if we make shirts like that, we might not be able to get credentials to go watch the games. <laughs> that's, that's that would probably like, be one of your best sellers, though. Probably one of the best sellers. I'd get one. Yeah, right? <laughs> because you can always, just wear them. Just you can wear always them. with the ball, say, okay, we're going to go no huddle. We're going to spike it. We're going to save time. Once the clock ticks, it's gone. Yeah. You can never get the time back. It never moves the other direction. Yep. So if you're not sure, just yep. call time out. Save the time. Figure out how to work with less timeouts. I got I got a question for for Blue that maybe you might have a little more intel to this or or maybe you know the guy a little bit but uh, Miami brought in Sly Johnson as well um, as a, you know I guess a GA slash analyst or he's just working with the team I don't know if he's consultant. employed by him by the, right he's more of a consultant how do you like that that uh, move by by the staff to bring in a guy like Sly Johnson? It's like cheating though because i kind of like i've known him for like 40 years well that's i mean that's why i'm asking you talk to him three (laughs) times a week so um yeah he he ran this by me about two months ago and i thought he was kidding you know at the time uh the irony of it he's a miami of ohio guy which is kind of crazy uh yeah i mean he's i also think that they brought it brought him in there for who he trains early on. He's had Josiah Trader and JJ since they were 10. He had Restrepo since he was 11. Um, so he's going to have, and he, I think, to be honest with you, and, and I think this is Mario thinks so too, that if he was here a year ago, that uh, Jeremiah would be here. Wow. He's that close. I yeah. mean, he was at, he's been at everything. He's like on top of him. And that's why, because he has a 
um, he trains kids every Saturday, Sunday. Uh, they're going to be moving back to Cardinal Givens. But the kids that you go out there, and I've been out there several times, it's like a who's who. I mean, you know, guys that are in the NFL that he's worked with since he was 12 and 14. And, and, um, and I think that's why he brought him on. He's run, you know, and it's not in the book, but I remember he ran the fastest time in the history of the NFL uh, 40. Ran a 4.16. And, uh, yeah, because I remember it being on there. And he's he's a weird cat in the way that he, he, he – if you go to combines, and this is where I first saw it, he won't let his kids go against each other at those combines. Hmm. And he'll always say, why? Why? You work against each other every week. Go against somebody else. And I think that he's Mario's type of guy because he's a guy knows the game. Yeah. And uh, he's, you know, he's not a trainer. What he is is he's a, a, he works on the craft. He doesn't teach you how to run. He doesn't care how fast you are. He just teaches you how to, and I, Honestly, be, believe it wasn't for him that Restrepo wouldn't be what he is. Uh, he's that type of guy, and I think it was—I think it's a great hire, a great hire. And he's a consultant, is what he right. is. So he, I think that I think when you're a consultant, you could still go to stuff. Hmm. You know that you could still go to those camps. That's essential. Oh yeah. If he can't run his own stuff, then he loses out on having that tie with those kids. And, you know, I've been offered, you know, various type of jobs like that. But that's been the reason why I've never taken those positions, because I couldn't do what I do. Right. I'd be buried in the office and calling kids and asking them, hey, how'd you do this week? Instead of being there to see how they did. Right. So, yeah, I I think, uh, to to be honest with you, I think it's a tremendous hire. Slides, uh, I'm just trying to figure out though. I thought he, he moved to Pet Port St. Lucie, so that's gonna be a hell of a commute. Well, I so mean, I don't know, yeah, he, that's gonna be interesting. He's from Miramar, parents still live in Miramar, so I'm sure he'll he'll see what, what it is. And I don't know if he has to be in the office every day. You see, I don't I don't know the details. I right. I was talking to him last week and then they announced it, and I haven't really, I was kind of busy over the weekend. It did, um, uh, they had special teams event. Boy, Gallus was there. I had a long talk with him. Boy, he's changed. He got, he's gotten, he's putting on like 25 pounds. His mom was there and she goes, he's fat. Tell him he's fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. If he keeps kicking those 50, 50 yarders, uh, that's, that's fine. I'm good with that. Yeah. And, uh, that. and, and Jose signed on with the Winnipeg Jets. I saw that. Good for him. Yeah. So, uh, or Winnipeg Blue Bombers, the Jets are the hockey team. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's but, uh, yeah, they um, and I saw you know a couple of the um, uh, Shane, what's his name, that played in the NFL for all those years. He was one of the instructors. I like going to those type of things, like the line camp that day, you know. <clears throat> and you go and nobody's there. I mean, no, uh, no twenty four seven, no on three guys, you know. So that's where I get a lot of the nuggets and. And, uh, yeah, I enjoy that stuff. And then this week I have that Orange Bowl showcase, which, uh, you know, for lesser kids, but still a great event. 300 kids will be there, college coaches, but smaller ones. Right. But I enjoy it. Well, you and never know. You can find someone there, right? You, you, you know what? You're 100% right. And I try to explain it to people that a lot of these small college re recruiting fairs that they have, what happens is, that's how, what's his name, um, uh, what's his name, uh, the guy who played with the Redskins, went to Mountain Union, Gar um, uh, what's Pierre name? Garçon. Yes, Pierre Garçon. Um, from John I. Leonard, that's not looking, he had a pretty decent career and he's from a small yeah, school. But now, in a lot of these recruiting fairs, what happens is they have film and they don't really, you know, that's all. They go off the film. But think about this. We're coming up on March. The last film for some of those kids was November. So what happens is you're flashing when the kid was 5'6", 160, and he could right. be 5'9", 190 now. So 
the difference with the Orange Bowl does is they not only, you know, show film and have a coach's social, but the next day on Saturday, they have 40 colleges show up and the kids go through a combine. So they can see the kids, what they look like, their twitch. You know, I mean, there's been a load of kids. You know, that's how these guys from these smaller schools get in the NFL. Because all of a sudden they get them. And nowadays it's going to be a whole lot different because they could go to one of these NAIA schools, you know, or division two, like Cam Ward did or something like that. And because of the portal, they can find their way from Ava Maria or Kaiser and, you know, be at Miami, you know, so you never know. Uh, but yeah, those events like that are really, really good. So, um, yeah, I'm anticipating spring, spring, and um, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, you know, now being new coaches, I never met any of these two guys. They didn't really recruit down here. Um, I met well, I met the what's his name last summer, but I didn't, you know, at the USF event. But I did ask one of the kids that plays for USF. I saw him over the weekend, and he says, "Oh, he knows what he's doing, man." He's a really, really bright guy. and Go oh, for Merritt? Yeah, Merritt. You know, people like him. And, uh, you know, and if Golish – and Gol, let me tell you something. Golish is on a meteoric rise. In two years from now, he'll have a power five job because he just – he's that type of guy. He comes from Tennessee where they really wanted him to yeah. stay there. And, um, yeah, so I think Didn't Merritt – Didn't he go to the Rams for a year and then he came back, right? Yeah. So. But Merritt comes from that stock of, you know, I mean – so they, uh, I think Levy was their OC when they were there. Right. So, yeah, so it's just, but, you know, and, and uh, asking uh, Boer Gallus about the team and, you know, because he, you know, when he goes out there and kicks a couple times a week, he sees all those guys out there and says they're looking pretty good, you know. So I'd, I'd like to hear that. That's cool. That's cool. And, and you know, I know that um... – you know, by the way, Cam Ward was at the new uh, the new team store this past weekend on 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 Sunday. Uh, I actually saw Harry at the baseball game. Um, shout out to the baseball team. We'll definitely have some content for you guys on that um, as they went three and. Did you have a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, there's things me and Vish definitely have to talk about before. Or, you know, when we when we talk about Kings baseball. Because there's some stuff that's lacking there, but we'll talk about it. It's not, a, I'm, and I'm not from not not from a team perspective, but uh, yeah, it's just you know everything else. The team looks good. The team looks, you know, again, it was NJIT, so it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But you, but what you have to do if you're a good team is score. No 19, doubt, you got to beat those. You got to beat all runs. those teams. No, you I gotta, agree. You got to do that, right? You got to score those 19 yeah. runs and 16 runs. That's what you got to do. And Miami, you know, first game of the season is always a tough one. Look, St. John's. St. John's be Florida first game of the season, right? So, yeah, we'll see what happens. But it, yeah, so, I agree with you. Though you got to win these games, you know, you can't be two and two after the first weekend against right. a program like that. And I was telling Vish before I was on with Max and them guys on Friday. Oh yeah, it was like the base. Eric Marrero was on, and he was oh, like, "Oh my god, <laughs> Eric Marrero." He was, he was giving game. me he was giving me progress reports on everybody. You know, <laughs> I bet he was. I bet he was. I'll tell you what, Cave is a real deal. But uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll definitely talk about that because I think um, you know there's 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 some hype there and there's some excitement. Yeah, good. Team, so how are the that. milkshakes? Oh man, I had the new JD. I had I don't know, Vish, Vish, did you have a milkshake when you were there? Tell me you did, man. I, I didn't because oh, they, I was there. Was sat, I, was, I was no, I was there Saturday and yeah. they closed early. Oh, they did. I went down at the seventh inning and they were shut. No were they putting here, alcohol right? in there now or what? I guess yeah. they ran out. Hell, it was, it was a double header, so I think yeah. they'd probably been working oh, since okay. like one o'clock. So they're just like they, they play the seven or nine inning double headers. Nine. 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 Oh, they do. Wow. Which I I mean they should have yeah. they should have mercy ruled. The Man, first that one. first game dragged because oh, it was 19 yeah. to 2. And and the second one was 16 nothing. I mean it was Jesus. Poor NJIT, 30 yeah, show to a ballpark, play 18 innings, is 35 to 2. Uh, but I did have, I had the new JD. The JD, uh, JD has his own milkshake now. So What's that got um, in it? It's a good one. It's vanilla, uh, vanilla ice cream with, excuse me, with Nutella and Oreos. Ooh, mm. okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. That's... Gotta admit. Yeah. That was, uh, that was yeah, I was definitely going to try that, but. 
That was good. I'll, yeah, I'll good. try that. I and I and I I'm anxious to try that the Joe Sagaki one, the peanut butter one. What what does that have in it? I don't even remember. I, I think it was like a, a hot like fudge and peanut butter on vanilla ice cream. Oh, that's not mm. bad either. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> man, I might. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna try to. to... I will weigh nine thousand pounds if I go yeah. down there for a weekend series. No kidding. I'm gonna try to get hit, hit up hit up on uh, another game or two this weekend to take on Long Island. So all right. Um, we'll see. I know Long Island was playing FIU this past week uh, on opening week. So I think yeah, they're that, down here. They're for down like... here for a little bit. 14 days, 15 yeah, days. Yeah, a lot of a lot of those northern schools do that. Yeah. 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 Over the Florida, do the Florida yep. circuit. I know it's snowing yep. in, in, in the northeast this week I a lot. Should. So yep. there's an understatement. There's um yeah, I know, but I remember Colby College of Maine used to come down here all yep. the time, start their their season and yeah, I like Maine, that. Maine did that for a few seasons, right? Yeah, they Maine did. did seasons, yeah. Well, Maine still comes down, but they go to Texas. They've been oh, going so. to Texas a lot. Ah, interesting. Okay. Okay. I know they had a couple of uh ball players there. So yeah, um, sure. Billy Swift. They um yeah, I mean it's gonna uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Miami's got an opportunity to to start the season off hot and then they take on the Gators in, in week three. So and Gators got beat by yep. St. John's. Yep, they did. So and watched number, a little number bit two of that team in the it. country though. So uh huh. Number two team in the country, apparently. So we'll see, you know, but uh it's college. It's college baseball, well, baby. Well, they're they're fourth now. They've dropped. Oh, oh wow! Watch out! The Miami jump in the top twenty-five now, right? Is now, Virginia right. up at one or no? No, Wake Forest is. The, yeah. The oh, Wake Forest. Forest. That's yeah. right. Wake Forest is number one, and you still got teams like Vandy up there, and uh, LSU's up there still, and Virginia's a pretty good program. Yeah, really. They got three NC pitchers State. too, or three good pitchers. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they're 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 good. NC State, UNC. Uh, there's some good teams in the ACC. The ACC, Very, like Cle always, Clemson, always. Clemson's another team. They, I would say AC, uh, the ACC is a top program in the it top has conference been. It in has college been. baseball. Yeah, it has been. Uh, I mean, some of the, I mean, you've got the Floridas and Vandy's, and you know, uh, South Alabama's Carolina. Alabama's not terrible either. No, Alabama's pretty good. South Carolina, you've got some good teams in the SEC. Well, as when, well. when their coach is in, uh, isn't fixing games and tossing tips to gamblers, there you go. If you yeah. haven't, if you haven't, uh, Follow that. I have it. Well, I mean, he got fired in the middle of last year just abruptly, crazy um, for gambling related. And they've unsealed the. Uh, That's the Alabama diamond. guy. Yeah. Not Schallenberger. Who is it? No, it was the guy from last year. Oh, um, last year. I, I I can look the name up. Um, but basically, what he was doing is he was <clears throat> like when he had like like the one that they caught red-handed is. Um, he had somebody that was betting at a casino in Iowa, like a sports oh, book, oh and he called him <laughs> to tell him there that to see Caitlin Clark play, and they went into the. Uh... Well, he calls him. He calls him to tell him he's leaving. His starting pitcher's injured as a pitching, and he doesn't really have a good arm to throw, so he's going to get killed. And the guy like bet so much money, like randomly on some college baseball game, that <laughs> it got flagged, and he got mad they wouldn't let him pay, place a bet that size. And he starts bragging to them that I know it's in the bag. It's a lock. I know the picture is a picture. He showed them like the text <laughs> messages on his phone to the casino wow. to try and I get them. Keep your mouth shut. And, and, and it, it blew back on, obviously. Oh, damn. But the coach was literally texting him, can you hurry up and place the bet? I have to turn yeah, the line card. Got to take the guy out. Oh, crazy. What? It was that bad. It was that bad. That's, it was that bad. That's... What is going on, man? That's so he wild. got fired in the middle last year. They still made the tournament. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and and I guess the good the the silver lining is you know they did a thorough investigation and it looks like it was just him like the players had no no one else like had really had any idea he was doing that so he got fired but yeah uh, <laughs> that's wild that is wild that well, is crazy. it is what it is um, we'll definitely have some Kings baseball coverage for you soon so um, keep uh, Keep a lock for that. Um, we've got, I mean, spring football is on its way, man. It's close. I know, Blue, I know you're excited about it. Three weeks. <clears throat> yeah, in uh, three weeks. I know the spring game is April 13th. So the guys will get ready to go. I know that the, I think it's typical what they have like a practice, like two practices, and then they go into spring break. Then they come back. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. They get ready. So um, I think a lot of schools do that. I know FIU yeah. is doing it the same thing. A lot of schools do that. Uh, yeah. What are you guys most excited about for spring football? 
just the battles at all the positions, all those new faces, where are they going to land? Uh, I'll say the cliche thing. I want to see Cam Ward play. Yeah. Well, I was going to say the same thing. Man. I really <laughs> want to see Cam Ward. New quarterback. Man. Yep. <laughs> You know, it's obviously right. It's gonna be vanilla and yada yada yada, blah blah. blah. It's gonna yeah, be vanilla. Yeah. We're not gonna we show don't much. Show anything after I, all, you know, this seven games. I think they gotta. <laughs> I think they gotta show a little something. You know what I mean? You know, uh, uh, you know, throw some deep balls and, and get him get him. I mean, obviously, he's not gonna be touched. But uh, I think the most important thing is, especially this year, man, you gotta stay, gotta stay healthy. I know we're building depth, but stay healthy and. Um, and I want to see those running backs. I think I'm excited to see yep. the running backs, see what those guys are going to do. The running backs and the safeties, because we got a brand new safety um, group back there, right? Uh, obviously, Jaden Harris comes back, which is great. Uh, Marquise Williams as well. But the guys like Zaquan and um, uh, God, Mish, Mish Powell and, uh, you know, Savion Riley and those guys. And, yeah. and even a even a guy like uh, is it Ryan Mack is playing safety or Dylan Day? One of those two. Right, uh, man, I think both of them play. Safety. Both of them. You got Isaiah Taylor, right? He's, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, they got a lot of faith. A lot of. Know? That's why I said, and there's everybody's healthy basically except Emery and I think two linemen or one. Yeah, guy. I think he's gonna be my my not my dark horse but my sleeper to 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 get some playing time and to be productive is Isaiah Taylor. I just think that you know. Well, he, you know, three years in the college, so yeah, he's, he's a, there, so. yeah, he's, he's a guy that, that that I think could come in and, and play a little bit. But you know, you've got so many so much talent there. You just don't. But the only guys that are really proven there is Meech Powell, right? And Savion Riley to a certain extent. Um, you haven't seen enough of Jaden Harris, although he's kind of the incumbent um, at one position from what they say. But now you've got Powell and and Savion there. Uh, you got Mark Markeith Williams, who's coming with all the uh, oh shit. Uh, who's coming with all the um, all the uh, yeah, yeah the, oh he's gonna be great he's a heavy hitter he's just got to gain some weight so hasn't really gained that weight so is he gonna be able to put on some weight and and be that guy you know where he's gonna be able to get some significant playing time so I don't know man I think that safety position is gonna be interesting because you've got a lot of you've got a lot of players uh, you know good ones too you just they're not proven yet and you know you had two all Americans basically <laughs> at that position for three years. Now what do you do? And I think that the team, again, because of Coach Guidry and his mentality on defense, a lot of it is going to run through those safeties. So you got to have somebody back there that's going to be a leader on that team, you know. And so I think that you'll start to see the development of those players, and uh, hopefully you'll get some good play out of them as well. It's not going to be like last year where we didn't see Cam Kitchens in the spring game. We're going to see all those guys. You're going to see a lot of guys. You're going to see all those guys in the spring game. Because uh, you don't have that guy, you might not see guys like Kiko in the spring game, right? You might not see guys like, uh, you know, Bain to a certain extent or Mesidor because he's still coming off that injury. Um, but you're going to see those safeties because God knows. I mean, you're going to see a lot of linebackers too because God knows those are the two positions where we've got talent. We just don't know who's going to start, who's going to be the guys. So um, it'd be interesting to see. I'm excited to see it though, for sure. And on, you know, on offensive running backs, it's. This is, you know, Chris Johnson. I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see Citizen, um, uh, Hellcat, those guys. So we'll see what happens. We shall see. What do you guys got? Vish, what do you got? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, I mean, this is a little bit from the other perspective, but some some people got to go. Um, yeah. And, oh, wait, by the way, that too. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm curious to see who's like getting less reps and, Essentially being voluntold to leave at, at that point because it's a, it's an it's not an insignificant number of players that have to. Exit. No, we're talking about eight to ten guys. At so least. that 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 initial depth chart will be interesting, and then kind of how it evolves over time. If you're on the bottom of the depth chart, right? The right, he's on the wall there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I but again, I mean, if they don't leave voluntarily, he's gonna have to. This basically doesn't happen in college sports. We have to cut people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or 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 well, how does that work with with regards to like gray shirts and all that? Can you still do that and be above the number as long as you gray shirt some guys? Yeah, but who? I mean, yeah, who? I, it's weird. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, how does that? But how does that work if they've already signed their scholarships? I yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that works. <laughs> they're already. I think. Their... I think this. What a lot of guys are going to do is they're going to play in this in, in the spring game and get some more tape, right? And then just yeah. hop in the portal again. Yeah, yeah. and and also like it's. 
yeah. and there's also there's there's some new position coaches and stuff so see where you stand true and then and then you know I wouldn't be surprised if another running back entered the portal. Let's I, I would be surprised if one didn't. Because that's what I'm saying. The, if, the, if, the, yeah, I wouldn't be yeah, surprised. I'd, I'd be surprised if they are all are here in the fall. Yeah, I agree. Numbers there. I agree. I think I have an idea as to one that might. But anyways, that's just I won't mention that. Why do you have to tease us like that, Jazz? Come on I, now. I won't mention that. Leave it like that. We can't, man. I can't. You know, I gotta. I know. I know. I gotta wait. I gotta wait. We'll see. We'll see. And wide receivers, there's a ton too. Yeah, got a no, ton of wide receivers. Yep. You know? That's a ton of wide receivers, a ton of slot wide receivers. Yeah, Michael Redding is back for his 17th year, right? Like, what the he hell? He already got two degrees, so hell, yeah. he already achieved. You know, I think at this point, he's just going to be the GA. Um, because <laughs> my goodness, you got Shamar Kirk who's coming. I know he's still developing a little bit, but he's a talented guy. Uh, like you said, Vish, you got a bunch of slot guys and, and Joseph and X and um, and even the Washington, one of the Washington brothers could play the slot. I mean, you got you got a lot of uh, yeah, you got a lot of players, man. You got yeah. a lot of players. In that, I'm 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 excited about it because uh, I know we've got some guys that left, like Ladson is gone. You know what I mean? And um, and Brashard and whatnot. But you might you might need another guy or two there too. A tight yeah, end. Right. What do you got a tight end? You got. You got ninth year, uh, yeah, Cam 40, McCormick. forty-eight year old Cam Cam McCormick, right? Oldest player in college football history. Um, I don't. That's don't fact check me on that. No, he's not, right. but he's he's yeah. right there. My but, actually, Miami had a twenty-eight year old guy. Did he really? Seventies. Oh, because he was in Vietnam first. So. Did he look like a, a forty-eight year old Chris Wanky? Because that guy. No, really he was a bitch at linebacker. Uh, yeah, I just I ran his picture a couple weeks ago. After Vietnam, I mean, of course he's going to come in and be a pain in the ass on the on, on the football field. That's for sure. Wake, no one wanted to be his roommate. Damn that's right, it. I bet. <laughs> PTSD there, poor guy, that's man. It. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, I think you're right, Vish. I think must, must have been fun. a hell of a locker room. Whew. This opponent is tough. You think this is tough? <laughs> when I was up in the shit with Charlie, you, you don't know yeah. tough is. Have you ever been in Saigon? Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. This shit's nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Didn't somebody, I think A&M had a guy a couple years ago, Texas A&M, that might was have. a linebacker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. Did, they did. Actually, he played against Miami. He reminded yeah. me of the he reminded me of the dude from the uh he ran out with the flag and everything. I remember that. I remember the that. movie The Replacements. Yep, 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 yep. That's a great movie. That was that a great is, movie. Keanu Reeves, I think, was in that one, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. The girl was pretty hot too. So yep. Not, yeah, that's not hard to forget. Um not at all. What do we got, Vince? Are we gonna do prize picks, by the way? I guess we should, right? Are we? Have you seen the Discord? What? Let's 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 not do price picks. Oh, okay. Uh, I clearly I haven't seen this one. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, DJ. I know. I just think this is funny because this all goes back to our show prep. Look, we made one promise in the opening, and, and we're gonna maybe stick we to stick it. to it. We are gonna stick. Yeah, to let's it. Let, let's bypass. I guess we're gonna bypass that, and we're gonna thank um, Larry Bluestein and the. Uh, Great job that he does. We Pops. did get a couple of questions for Blue in the chat. I don't know if oh, you've heard we him. Go. Well, oh, a no, question, boy, I, I guess. Dylan Day. I don't know if you're familiar with him. And yeah, yeah. You have any thoughts key. thoughts on him? Fresh is really yeah. lighting that stuff up. Just give me a call. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, right. well, I mean, Fresh is kind of ordering us to get CBs and stuff. So, I mean, I don't know that we can affect that. But uh, yeah, one, Dylan, one Day, no, Dylan Day's a beast. That's a kid out of uh, a lab, a Southern Lab in Baton Rouge, right? Yes, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And then what do you, go and then, go watch his film. That kid will maul you. He's, and they got um, comparable. Believe me, Louisiana's got comparable high school. To oh, him. yeah. Okay. Well, the top, top Absolutely, state. Absolutely. Yeah. In high school football for sure. Yeah. Ben I like Ryan Mac, Isaiah Thomas. Those guys are, are really good. Talk about under the radar. I mean, Ryan Mack obviously put his name on there in, in the uh, All American game. Um, but, I mean, those guys are. That's that's going to be a good backfield, you know, yep. uh, in, in a couple of years. I think Potentially, if they all, you know, you can never say that. Anymore, if they stick no. around, if yep. they stick yeah, around, and if they say, pan not out, not with yeah. all this stuff anymore. It's because I had a um, I had Chad Wilson on the show tonight, and we talked about that very thing. It's just see, that's why 
you can't plan. You just can't. That's true. You know, no matter how good you're doing, you could have a 10 win season, but somebody's offering you $2.2 million to jump. See ya. You know what it is? The starters on like good teams where they can come out and they can be legit, you know, draft picks, they leave and they go to another team and they're, they're starters and they, and they don't have their, you know, it's not like their position is going to get taken by somebody else. It's it's unbelievable how that happens, man. It was like Caleb Williams. We were ta- somebody was talking about him the yeah. other day. If you look at how much money he was making so much more than the NFL minimum, which is like 750 grand now. But I was saying that here's a guy that had Nissan, McDonald's, um, Dr. Pepper, and like five regional Southern California uh, commercials. The guy was making $2.2 million just on the commercials. Wow. So he's he's going in the, you know, the first round of the draft pick with $4.5 million already in hand. Dr. Pepper and everything, right? You mentioned everything. Yeah, yeah. Then it's N- Nissan. He has the Heisman uh, house. He does that commercial. That's does right. Dr. Pepper. He's the one with... Wearing number 13, wearing 13. Yeah. 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 And then he does Del Taco and he does um, another LA brand of something, ice cream or something like that. Yeah. That's wild. Not to mention that playing for the Bears would probably want to make me stay in school as long as possible, too. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. That's going to be interesting on draft night. Yep. That's going to be interesting. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's going to be really interesting. To, but whatever it is, it's happened before where the John Elways and and uh, and uh, Manning, where they leverage, Manning, these yeah. teams, leverage these teams not to go, you know. Uh, but uh, I go to the Bears. They got they got some cap room and they got draft picks and shit. And they actually have a competent front office now, which hasn't always been the case. So yeah, I, I mean maybe maybe. You know, where's gotta- your boy Belichick hanging out at? Nowhere. Nowhere, which is very interesting because I think he wanted full control of everything. And oh, that's those, why. That, yeah, that, that that's not flying with other teams. So, so we'll he'll see. be a consultant uh, at Boston College. So <laughs> he's got to be doing something. I can't see him sitting around well, not doing something all day. He's got to be watching some film. I think, I think Chud might have something to say about that. <laughs> but you know what? I'll I'll give you a little nugget. Uh, Adam Gase, he's that's a awesome. consultant. Is he? For, for who? Uh, for Boston College? No, Cardinal Gibbons High School. Get out of here. I swear he shows up there like twice a week. Cardinal really? Gibbons High School. Adam Gase. Like, dude, how the, how, how the mighty have fallen, huh? Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know if mighty is the right word. but Well, or yeah. made enough money to take a low-pressure job. Exactly. Is actually what, it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, what a cop-out, right? What a – yeah. Come on. Like, people feel sorry for G- Gase and the other NFL uh, Dolphin coaches, but they walk – like, like what's his name? Like, uh, uh, from New York, Miami. They walk, mm-hmm. waltz out of here with $5 million. Yeah. I'll be a – I don't care if you like me or not. Bye. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ain't that the truth. Ain't that the truth. Um, you know, I was going to mention something that completely – this is why this is why this show is so great, right? Thank you, Larry. Jazz, are you Jazz? Are you gonna play? And I'll say this to everybody, but I'll start with Jazz. Are you gonna play the new NCAA football game when it comes out? Because I'm gonna build our Miami Dynasty. I think you're damn right. I am. All right, I was making sure. I was making sure. Oh Chris, yeah. You play? I haven't bought my PS5 yet. I mean, I don't have a console to play. Yeah, on, I'm so. not a big. I'm not a Blue big doesn't gamer. have time to play? So no, I'm not a big game. Blue Blue won't play that. I mean, I'll, okay. I'll, I. I, I I, I'm not a big gamer at all. Like if I play, it's like the the, the NCAA or Madden or something like yeah. that or FIFA. But I don't even. I gave my I gave my console away. I gave it to my brother. Cause I'm like I don't have time for that crap. But but yeah. but when uh yeah when NCAA comes out in, in the summer, yeah. I gotta go get myself a PS5. Only reason why I bought a PS5. Yep. Yeah. How? Exactly. You know, this is the question. This is a question, right? This is a real question, DJ. I'm gonna <laughs> ask you because Vish, I don't think cares, right? Yeah. Vish is not a big gamer like me either. But but this is one one that I will play, right? Uh, like it, it could happen where I'm gonna end up just owning a, a loft by yep. myself and yeah. sitting there. Yep. Playing. But um, how much would you pay for that game? How much would you pay for NCAA? That is the question. Considering I've been waiting about 10 years for this game to come out, 
Wait, two thousand. Probably yeah, like ten years. Ten years. Probably so. like two hundred to three hundred dollars. Yeah, like, I wouldn't yeah. even blink. I Look at this like, face. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> oh my god! Wow, it, I wouldn't even that's blink. A lot of lobster rolls. I mean, yeah. for me, it would be buy a <laughs> console like and then buy the game. So. Right. I'm I'm gonna be in at almost a thousand dollars right there. So oh, Jesus. Yeah, I got the console dang. like a couple of Christmases ago for this game specifically. I don't really game too much, but I'm like, I got to get a new system. So, a new... so it's this summer is the answer. To July, I think. Summer, probably. Yeah. Full reveal in May. Game comes out in July, right before Madden. And yeah, just like the wait, old days. Wait, but DJ, you got the PS5 because that's the only yeah. the only console to work yeah, on. I got five. Five. Okay. Yeah, I got to get the 5 too. It's like 300 bucks for the fly, 5 now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like Yep. So three hundred bucks for, the, for that, and then the game is probably going to be flea market. Man. The game is not going to be this. It's going to be a, like fifty or sixty. The, 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 the game will be probably $70, 69 ninety nine. I'm sure. And then if you get like those limited editions or all that crap, but, but the thing like about but the stuff. thing about it too now is unlike the last game that came out, you're not going to have to go to a store to buy it. You can just download it digitally download on it. your console now. So yeah. it's no rush. That's true. Where's the spring game going to be? <laughs> Where? A dry I'm, pink. Yeah, I think he's gonna be dry pink. Oh, oh a dry pink. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it Hard Rock last year? No, it was yeah. a dry pink. We we were. What talking... did we go for that day? We were there. But where do we go to the Hard Rock Stadium where we? Were oh, next that to was uh, that was a that was a false a scrimmage. That was yeah, a scrimmage. The false scrimmage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. well, the problem with uh, Hard Rock is they host the tennis tournament there. That's right. In the spring, so the, there's actually a, a tennis court on the football field. So yeah, you know, yeah, that's, that's right. where they they put center court. That's where they that put stuff. the finals. Yeah, yeah. So you can't really play football there. That's kind of cool. I get that. I remember it was just a stadium. Now it's everything. It's a sports complex. The races are coming. Oh man, that's yeah. another one. Who won the 500? I didn't even see. I don't know, but we can our car our correspondent Evan Sones could tell you. Yeah, yeah they went uh, off at four o'clock today. I, I just I, thought there was a big crash at some point, but I didn't. Yeah, I had Joey Logano winning, but uh, there's a stretch. Uh, <laughs> you know what came out, what did come out this weekend was the Ferrari um hyper what is it, the hyper car uh, that they have? Um it was really sick. It's pretty badass actually. Um, hyper something. I don't know what it is. Don't they it. let you guys ride, do test drives for your formula oh, show? Man. If they did, if listen to me, Blue, if they did, that would be such a shit show. Let's just put it that way. I don't First know how. Of, I... How's my fat ass gonna fit in one of those damn F1 cars when all those guys weigh like a buck twenty soaking wet? <laughs> They're like, okay? like horse races, horse yeah. jockeys. Look, yeah, no, this, smaller, this is but... not a this is not a big dude. Like he's not a fat dude. This would definitely not fit in one of those. Yeah, no, I'm way you too tall. I'm gonna fit. You think way I'm gonna tall. fit in one of those? No, things? I'm way too tall though. It doesn't yeah, like no you gotta chance. be. You gotta be like five. You gotta eight. be. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, well, yeah. You, thanks, bitch. Yeah, you gotta be five eight. It'll be. You, you can't be five eight this way either. You gotta be five eight this way. <laughs> I'm not commenting okay? on that part, man. Yeah. Uh, you do you. <laughs> you gotta be really sure. No, because it's actually. If you, Even if the you, tall guys weigh, they literally weigh like a buck forty. <laughs> well, because like, but they have to be short because what you actually do is they actually don't. It's not really a seat. You're lying down in the car. Yeah, you're like at an. Their feet are above them in the nose cone, which is That's where the brake pedal is. So, so no, they have no. to be that that tiny that their feet only extend into the nose cone. And if you're too tall, you'll weigh the car down. So yep. my claustrophobia would not do well in one of those cars. Oh, it's rough. Yeah. Yep. It's, you got to be a special type of person. To do yeah, that. you do. No, they're tiny. I, I, I and somehow you, and you're my way packed in there, somewhere. man. You got that <laughs> neck brace, and you yeah. got yeah. Helmet no thanks. At all. Yep. No, thank you. Yeah, no. I, I, they're, they're all unbelievably short. I conned my way into a press credential two years ago. They're all like <laughs> this high off the ground. Like they are so short. You're like you almost. Wa- they're the shortest people there, so you're like gonna walk into them and not really see. Even them. the tallest guys, like George Russell, and that. Yeah, they're all, they're short too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's crazy, but uh, yeah. yeah, crashing one of those, they could just pop you into the ground, man. That's it. They ain't getting oh, no. out of there. Not not anymore, but no, they but, don't. Uh, they're they're uh, they're very safe. They're very they're actually very safe now. But yeah, be, <clears> even <throat> ten years ago, I mean, you you got in a car crash with those and. It was lights out. So, um, but it's fun. It's fun to watch, and uh, we'll definitely have some some 
F1 hitting the apex for you coming up soon too. So we got a lot of things right now. Like so, so much for it being a slow time of the year. You got F1. We've got baseball. We've got college baseball. We got basketball. We've got uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Right. We even got spring football. So uh, this is definitely a place you want to keep it locked on to is the Five Reasons Kings uh, network on on YouTube and of course all the podcasts. You can check them out there. Go to the Five Reasons Kings podcast on Apple and on Spotify, wherever it is that you get your, your podcast, make sure you check it out. We've got everything on there, not only Kings football with uh, six rings Kings, but we've got buckets on there. We're going to have, uh, I think I don't want to mention it yet, but I think we've got an official name for Kings baseball. Yes, I think so. um, we've got Kings baseball on there and any specials <laughs> that we're going to have Kings, Kings sports related. It'll be on there. So make sure you keep a lot. We'll be doing some, uh, um, so was this show. What's that? So is this show. This show is on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said the Six Rings Kings. Yeah, said, yeah, yeah. yeah this, this, show, this actual show will be on there also. Yes. For sure. Uh, and follow us, obviously, on, on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it, at Six Rings Canes. Uh, make sure you follow us on there as well. And um, Look who showed up on time. Oh, nice, nice. Right, right hey, on time, Maximilian. Right on time, my friend. Um, big big old match from the, uh, from the Miami Flow gang over there. Uh, appreciate you coming on and, and showing us love for two seconds and then popping back out. So, um, hey, listen, I get it. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but in, in all seriousness, uh, hopefully we'll have some uh, some baseball content for you very soon here. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the NGIT uh, matchup and uh, UCF comes into town on Wednesday. Um, and then we play Long Island on the weekend for a three game set. So and then Florida next uh, week after that. So. I'm assuming by the way, I'm assuming Ben's gonna pitch on Wednesday, but um that's, that's he was announced point. on Sunday. I don't right. Know what, I don't know why they bothered. There was no way that game was getting there was played. no way. There was no way. Um by the way, yes. Oh you know what Max didn't make he he actually sent it to me really cool. Makes uh some highlights highlight reels of some of the players uh for on the on the baseball team. You guys want to definitely check that out on yeah. YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, Max has got some stuff there. Max, if you want to plug your, your, you know, where they can find that, go ahead and do that, man. It's really cool. Um, you know, Max does some, some really cool stuff with that. Uh, and we'll have him on to talk some baseball. Whenever Blue wants to talk some damn baseball, he can come on also. Uh, you hey, know, Max, tell him how much I talked baseball the other day. Oh my God, you probably Jesus. Yep, 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 yep. I'm sure. I'm sure Max was like, oh. Sh- Really? You can talk you know that much about baseball? I told yeah, you. I knew a lot. I told you. I knew enough to hang in there with Eric for a minute, but <laughs> oh, does Eric know his stuff or what? Yeah. He's just saying, he, oh yeah, he, Yeah. He's a yeah, that's all he probably does. It's yeah. reads it. I know he texted me. He's like, Are you guys doing a pregame on Friday night after the first game? I'm like, No, it's the first game. I'm tired, dude. I'm done. <laughs> you know? I'm not doing a. I'm not, I mean, not a pregame. Uh, you know, post game. Uh, post game. Uh, Eric told me. I told. I told. I told Eric. Eric, I'm here at the game. And he's like, "Where are you?" And I'm like, "I'm right behind." You know, I'm right at the top, right underneath Weicho and and I don't know the guy that he was doing the game with. And um, I didn't even get to see him, but I know he was there. I think Ross. There you don't do press there. pass stuff. You got to. Yeah, pass. yeah, I was, yeah, I was there. No, I was in the press box. The press box is right underneath Weicho. Uh, right underneath the, the broadcast. So no, that's good. Yeah, so we were there with uh Gabriel Garcia from Lemon City Live. So shout out to Gabe, he's a cool dude. And uh some of the other guys were actually there. I was surprised to see some of the guys that, that cover football that were there. So uh um, well, there's nothing else going on. So yeah, I guess so. I guess you're right. They that's wanted right. that milkshake. They don't give the press free milkshake. Uh shit, I wish. Although the line wasn't bad when I went. So I went, I got the milkshake, and I went right back up. And by the way, I did not suffer the consequences later. Look at JD. He's already improving the program. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Jazz, exactly. Jazz kept it down. I, mean, that is, uh, yeah. it, it, I kept it down. That was, and, uh, that it was, was that went, a moment. It was, uh, it was nice. It was, it was a nice drink, a nice uh, milkshake. So uh, shout out to JD and then and the JD uh, Mark Light shake. So, um, But, yeah, so we'll be on. I know you've got buckets coming up soon as well, Vish. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday, okay, awesome, and I'm sure we'll have some uh, we'll have some baseball coverage before that as well. So make sure you keep it locked on here on the Five Reasons Canes Podcast Network. Oh, well, Five Reasons Canes Network, yeah. uh, and the podcast. So both you can find us on YouTube and on on wherever it is that you get your podcast. So make sure you keep it locked. Uh, we will see you guys <laughs> next Lunas. See you guys later. The Six Rig Kane Show. Yeah. The Six Rig Kane Show. Yeah. The 
six rings came show. <laughs> you know.